dairy yeah, again. That's right. And so there's such a strong correlation between the mucus that's, right. that's formed that's right. and the dairy. Um, and as Ann was saying, it's meant for a cow. It's not meant for the humans. Right. And we're the having sex. Mm -hmm. They want to take the relationship to another mm -hmm. level, but they don't want to be intimate yet mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of having sexual Hello and welcome to Right Decisions. I'm Tammy Moore Johnson, your host. It is indeed my pleasure to come to your homes weekly with a show that's created to provide tools for success. Today we're talking about suicide. Suicide is the intentional taping, taking of one's own life. The World Health Organization estimates that approximately one million people die each year from suicide. On December 21st, 2017, the Center for Disease Control released the most recent data related to suicide for the year 2016. According to this data, suicide is still the 10th leading cause of death and the rate of suicide in 2016 increased by 1.2%. So just what can we do as a community to help with suicide prevention? First, be aware of the signs of suicide and steps that we can take to support someone who's contemplating suicide. Here to help me discuss the topic of suicide awareness are Reese Palmer, a clinical psychotherapist from Palmer and Counseling and Consultants, and Jennifer Felkel, coordinator of Family Literacy, Parenting, and Social Work Services for School District 5 of Lexington and Richland Counties. Welcome to Right Decisions, and thank you so much for joining me to talk about this very important topic. Sure. Thank you for Absolutely. inviting us. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. You now, we have to allow people to understand how serious this is. This is like an epidemic. It is. It is. Let's, let's talk about some of the statistics that we see going on right now. Sure. You, you know, uh, during the research, I was mm -hmm. for young people, yes. 10 to 24, this is like the what? The second? Second leading. Second leading. For, for, yeah, for our young folks, it's, it's a really serious problem. Ages 10 to um, 14, which is that really critical middle school, beginning high school age, yes. uh, really vulnerable. Uh, second leading um, cause of death is suicide. And then our, our um, next segment of the population, 15 to around 34 years old, uh, statistics show that that's the third leading uh, cause of death um, in the state of South Carolina. In so the state a, of South Carolina. Right here in South Carolina. Wow. And I would just add to that is a preventable yes, problem. Yes, absolutely. It's something absolutely. that we actually can prevent if that's we've correct. got those protective factors around our students and our families and our communities to bring awareness. And I want to thank you oh, for having a show Lord. like this today Hallelujah. about that because yes. I think that's a huge piece of what we need to do is bring awareness. Talk about that. That's right. That's right. And not to put that, you know, on a shelf, but that it is a true epidemic and that we're seeing that. And it's just a shame that that is the second and third leading cause of death That's when right. that is such a preventable thing that we mm -hmm. can do to help our young people. Yeah. Let's talk about um, some of the warning signs. Sure. Now, so we, we emphasize with young people, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about that because it is the second leading for young people. Sure. But it's also up in like the fourth, I believe, with adults as well. So we'll go back and talk about that. But for teenagers, mm -hmm. what are some of the warning signs that um, something's going on there? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's lots of different things that can begin to point to perhaps um, you know, a young person that's struggling um, with suicidal thoughts or self-harming behaviors. Um, typically, there's usually some type of underlying um, depression mm -hmm. or anxiety or, or perhaps some other uh, mental health diagnoses that they may be struggling with. It may be diagnosed, it may be undiagnosed, but typically it's, it's related um, most frequently with depression. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the features and the symptoms of depression are helplessness, mm -hmm. hopelessness, um, sadness, you know, and really just a, a sense that things are not improving, a lot of emotional pain that they can't seem to, to shake. And so uh, anyone that finds themselves uh, in that type of uh, mindset mm -hmm. and emotional state uh, over time can begin to contemplate suicide and, and in fact either attempt or successfully take their lives. So those are some of the things that um, really uh, are, are the underlying causes. What does it look like? Um, frequently it looks like um, essentially the behaviors that I described, very mm -hmm. sad, 
Um, the person may seem uh, tearful frequently. Um, isolation. Um, they tend to want to be alone a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, many of the things that perhaps they found pleasure in, pleasurable activities um, for young people, if it was extracurricular activities or sports or doing things with the family and outings, they may kind of begin to isolate and step back away from those things that they just don't find pleasure in them anymore. Um, some of the other things that we notice is that uh, there may be a lot of, uh, of self-talk that's really negative, mm -hmm. uh, very Such as pessimistic. What? What, are, what are some of the self-talks that, that may mm -hmm. come across, Jennifer? I think when you hear kids say that I can't do this anymore, mm -hmm. um, I'm not good at that, it's just hopeless, mm -hmm. I should give up. Mm -hmm. um, and like Reese said, you know, when they change behavior, they were doing they were doing extracurricular activity, they were a football player, or whatever, and then all of a sudden they quit doing those things. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think at the root cause of that is that need for healing to that's figure right. out yes. what is it that they're yes. hurting from mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of one of the reasons why in the school districts we felt that it's very important mm -hmm. that we are a huge piece of trying to prevent that you know right. the big part of that policy and the Jason Flat Law right. Act mm -hmm. of right. you know 2012 mm -hmm. in South Carolina you know it mandates that all of our classroom teachers and our school administrators and school staff are really trained on what are those warning signs mm -hmm. In, in, and I'm glad you mentioned the, J the Jason Flag Act. Mm -hmm. And really that came about because um, his son killed himself. He committed suicide and he called it the silent epidemic. Mm -hmm. And so from there, now we have 36% of our states who are training our teachers to be able to identify sure. when kids are having these signs mm -hmm. because that's how serious it is. You know, parents, we need you to also be able to know some of the signs that your child may d be displaying, but we also make in certain states we're requiring the teachers to identify sure. that too. Because mm -hmm. they can truly be that protective factor for Absolutely. a lot of our mm -hmm. students. And mm -hmm. they see things that we might not notice. And mm -hmm. I know for me personally, I have two children, you know, how they act in school might be very different and how they act at home. Mm -hmm. And so having those protective people That's around good. them yes. to kind of have that yes. open communication and for the stigma attached to mental illness and to, you know, depression and those feelings to yes. recognize that, you know, it's okay. We, you know, your brain and your your mental health is just as important as your physical health. That's right. And the more conversations we have around that, that they realize that we do have avenues for healing and we mm -hmm. have avenues to help them from that brokenness that they're feeling at that time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, and I know that, and I really want to help about our young people, sure. but this is also very uh, much an issue with adults as well. Absolutely. Now, can you share some statistics that are going on with adults sure. like our men they do what like 3.5.7 more than the females that's they're right. ahead that's right so, mm -hmm. yeah and the, the 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 gender breakdown is men are are, are certainly much more higher at risk to mm -hmm. commit suicide um, by race it's it's uh, typically white males that's right. um, mm -hmm. at a much higher rate um, so that that you know that's not to say that that um, that you know women aren't uh, also susceptible to it, it and right. thinkable, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about it as well. Anyone really who has struggled for for some time with any type of depression or or mental health um, disorder that really um, you know uh, makes it difficult for them to to see things optimistically to f have any hope or any uh, sense that things can can get better. Some of the other warning signs I wanted to touch yes, on as well do. is is um, any change in sleeping habits. You mm, know, if you see that someone's point. sleeping yeah. a lot more than they typically would, or or, or sometimes even just the opposite, um, uh, a lack of a need for sleep, and they're maybe having some in, in, insomnia and sleeping mm -hmm. a lot less. Mm -hmm. So it could be either or. Um, same goes for appetite. If mm -hmm. they seem to be eating a lot more than normal, um, mm -hmm. or or not eating very much at all. Um, so it, it's not necessarily one or the other. It could be you know, and it's it differently for every person. Is it just a change um, so of behavior? Is that what we're looking for? Yeah, those with types the, of with things. Those patterns? Yeah, anything that is, is, is you know, a, a shift and a change from what that person's normal sort of baseline behavior is. You begin to notice that, you know, typically if you had someone in your family or if you're a parent, your child, and they typically have always had a pretty healthy appetite right. and, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, no, I'm not really hungry and they're skipping meals frequently, spending a lot more time in bed, spending a lot more time in their room or isolating. Um, those are some signs, uh, especially significant, is if they begin to talk about um, not being around anymore, using more vague terms mm -hmm. like, um, you know, maybe things would be better if I wasn't here, or I wonder what things would be like. Um, they uh, perhaps, uh, some other behaviors may be starting to give away some things that, mm -hmm. that are prized possessions, things that would normally be something that um, 
uh, they would want to hold on to. And you know, those are some significant um, concerns, um, red flags. Higher risk is for anyone that's ever uh, contemplated suicide before, any attempts before. Um, so we you always said the higher risk is what? There, that presents a higher risk if a person has already That's right, previously. Continue. Tell you what, sure. let's continue that after we come back from a break. Sounds good. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Tammy Moore Johnson from Right Decisions. Thank you so much for tuning in to our weekly show. If you like our platform and what I stand for, then please like us on Facebook. Is Right Decision with Tammy Moore Johnson. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, Right Decisions with Tammy Moore Johnson. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to Right Decisions. We're talking about suicide awareness today. Reese, before we left for the break, mm -hmm. you were talking about that there are higher risks. Sure. Can you elaborate on that now? Sure, there are certain individuals that have a higher risk for um, suicide. And, and again, those individuals that do um, you know, struggle with some type of a mental health disorder, typically, mm -hmm. as I said before, depression is a, is a very common one that's linked to suicidality. Um, bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. typically when they're in that either manic or that depression um, episode. Um, some of the other things um, that are more uh, connected to biology, mm -hmm. um, if there was a family member um, mm -hmm. that also had struggles with um, suicide or certainly if someone successfully suicide in your family, oh, wow. that yeah. makes you a much higher risk, mm -hmm. particularly if you're struggling with your own depression. So those are the things that we want to be aware of. Know our own family history. Um, I think you mentioned stig stigma before. A lot of times we don't want to talk about that, mm -hmm. but just as much as we want to know our medical history in our family, we certainly want to know our mental health Absolutely. history as well so that we can curtail some of these um, folks feeling like there's just no hope and there's no help available. Isn't there also the um, background in the family when it in, uh, includes with that they've, they've seen substance abuse in Absolutely. the family as it makes it a higher risk for Absolutely. that too. Yeah. Anytime that there's uh, a substance use disorder that's mm -hmm. involved, um, there's a very significant chance of, of uh, someone contemplating suicide. Mm -hmm. Obviously it alter alters the mind state, but we also know a lot of times that folks uh, do in fact use uh, substances as a coping mechanism, mm -hmm. to self-medicate, as a way to deal with either emotional or other uh, types of pain that they're dealing with. So we definitely want to look at that as a, as a, as a possible risk and a sign uh, as well. And then the, really the, the lying foundation or the root reason for suicide is because they feel hopeless right. and they feel that is just, you know, they can't bear the pain. Is that right. correct? That is yes. correct. Mm -hmm. A lot of people um, have the, and even I did, you know, even as a, you know, a professional, um, I, I, I didn't really fully understand this, that a lot of people believe that folks who contemplate suicide and even complete suicide um, really want to die mm -hmm. and frequently that's, that's, true. that's really not right. true they want the pain to stop mm -hmm. and they don't see any other options yes. or alternatives and so that's the way that they stop the pain mm -hmm. and there's um, no, and they haven't learned any other tools on how to mechanisms. stop that pain yeah. you know they don't they've not been exposed to those types of mechanisms to stop that pain right. mm -hmm. and that's why I think today's show and we're st such strong advocates on that that this really can be something that we can help navigate through to change sure. mm -hmm. that from happening mm -hmm. and one of the things in my reading is that if it's okay to talk about Absolutely. suicide, that's the one thing. Some people think, oh, I better not mention that yes. to someone. But if they're showing the signs, if they're talking about death, they're making out a will, they're giving away, the, like you said, the prized possessions. Yes. And um, you need to mention, you need to ask them, okay, what's going on? Are you Absolutely. okay? Right. Talk with them. And I think a lot of people have that mindset that they're going to plant a seed or they're going to give them uh, an yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That's we one have that in yeah. a lot of our, um, our families that we work with as uh -huh. well as our staff at the schools. And that was one of their questions. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a myth. Right, it's a And myth. so once mm -hmm. we kind of, you know, dispel that myth and explain that to them, their eyes were open to that. No, they really, like you said, mm -hmm. they don't want to die. Mm -hmm. They just don't know any other way out of the hurt. They don't. Mm -hmm 
don't know any other way out to relieve this pain that they're feeling mm -hmm. so incredibly, yeah. you know, deep down in their depression or their hopelessness. So mm -hmm. how can we best help them to heal through that pain? Mm, absolutely. And, and do you think that is the reason why, well, um, the veterans, I was reading this morning about mm -hmm. uh, the veterans um, that uh, 20 to 22 yeah. commit suicide, I believe a week, I'm trying to remember, but mm -hmm. so, um, in Nevada State, they sure. were writing about that. Mm -hmm. So the veterans are leading in that because they, uh, they come back mm -hmm. from the war and sure. they have all this going on. And sure. can any of you talk to that? Yeah, I think that, well, you know, just again, focusing just here in South Carolina, mm -hmm. um, statistically, um, about one person every 12 hours will die as a result of suicide mm. in the state of South Carolina. One person uh, every One every 12 hours. 12 that's a staggering hours. statistic. That's two a day. Uh, oh my that's, goodness. That's, that's a, a very staggering and, and very frightening statistic. Um, you are twice as likely to die by suicide than homicide mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. state of South Carolina, according to these, these statistics. But specific, you know, because we are a military town, obviously, specific to your question regarding um, um, en enlisted um, service people, um, yes, there's a very, very strong correlation if there's been you know, any type of uh, combat or any other type of traumatic experience yes. mm -hmm. where that, um, uh, that, that soldier has experienced um, traumatic experiences and, and now has uh, PTSD mm -hmm. or, or some type of other um, uh, disorder that they're struggling with as a result of, of that traumatic experience, depression is often a very prevalent and prominent part of that um, disorder as well. And so suicide, unfortunately, does become another way of trying to get get the pain, pain to up. stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, say that statistics again, you said one every 12, 12 hours. hours. Yes. And so that's why we really need mm -hmm. vi viewers, we have to pray about this. Mm -hmm. People are dying too early. That's right. They are God's gift. Mm -hmm. And we're here to help. You know, they have counselors, we have social work, we have mental health. If you see, if you know a family member, please connect with them. Let's talk about some more strategies sure. that people who are family and friends mm -hmm. can do for their loved ones. Sure. I think one of the biggest things that we've seen is, like we said earlier, is just a talk. You know, mm -hmm. to really, like, you know, Reese said, if you start seeing changes in your loved ones, you know, talk to them. Because I think a lot of times it's like we don't want to dwell into that and we're scared. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's the fear from the other person, like I'm sure. going to plant a seed or mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to say. Like I said, we had a lot of staff members and family members that I just didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of your, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, the people that are watching today, they might say, I just don't know what to say. Right. Just start the conversation. Mm -hmm. Because so many times from what the research says, they don't want to die. Yes. They just don't know how to help out. So yes. you know, it's like anything else. If you just kind of come alongside the person that That's is hurting right. and be with them, God's going to give you the word Amen. and you can find the resources. Right. You know, there's right. plenty, yeah. you know, you can, there's there. lots of help out. There's lots of experts. You don't have to be a truly an expert. And I think mm -hmm. that's one myth that's out there too. That's you know, right. that I have to know how to Absolutely. counsel and I need to do all that. No, you no. just need to care. That's yes. Right. And everybody yes. can show kindness yes. and everybody can care. Mm -hmm. And you know things that they might not even mm -hmm. see in themselves. And sometimes hearing those words of affirmation. That's right. You know, and seeing that they are worthy and mm -hmm. that they are not hopeless, that, mm -hmm. that today might seem dark. Yeah. But we know that tomorrow's going to be a better day. That's right. And kind of re instilling in them sure. that sense of confidence. Sure. And, you know, going back to young people, I yes. think one thing that we've seen over time, too, is just the pressures that our young people are under. Even our adults, you know, mm -hmm. society and schools are just a reflection, a mm -hmm. small glimpse of what society sees as a whole. Right. Right. So when we see all these children struggling with social media yeah. and the images and mm -hmm. all that stuff, and they're at a time in their lives, honestly, where they're gonna compare, just developmentally speaking, they're gonna compare themselves mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out who they are. Right. But when they see these images every day, all day long, that they've gotta live up to this perfectionism, mm -hmm. that's really hard. So I think as parents and as mm -hmm. caregivers and as community members, yes. we have to really instill in our young people and as whole that you do your very best mm -hmm. and that God does have a plan for That's you. Right. That's right. And Amen. that, you know, you don't have to compare yourself to anybody. Mm -hmm. right. He That's knew exactly point. who you were. That's right. And that if we can instill that in them, I think at such a young age, those messages can be combative whenever their psyches or whenever mm -hmm. they're see feeling those low days That's right. that they know that they've been built up with so much stronger. They're in God's image. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They're in God's image. Let's That's take right. another break sure. and then we'll pick up right there. We'll come back. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back.
You may have an event that you would like to announce, or if you are a business that would like to get your information to the public, consider advertising with Right Decisions. Right Decisions is aired on the Fox Network in the following counties, Richland, Calhoun, Lexington, Fairfield, Kershaw, Saluda, Lee, Sumter, Clarendon, Orangeburg, and Newberry. That's a total of 11 counties that can hear your message. Beyond reasonable rates and wide market opportunity, help impact the communities with a premise to make right decisions by supporting the program's platform. For more information, call 803-348-6517. Welcome back to Right Decisions. We're talking about suicide awareness. Jennifer, you hit some good points there before we left with a break with the social media and how people, the young people want to compare themselves mm -hmm. and that they really need to just look at God as their image mm -hmm. and then go to, go to them. Sure. You know, we would start talking about the young people because we said that parents, viewers communicate with your teenagers or with anybody that you know That's is right. about to commit suicide. That's right. Even if you don't bring up the suicide, connecting with them. That's right. I think sometimes we get too busy and we don't reach out to people. That's right. When I did this research yesterday evening and I'm reading up on it, I thought I reached out to one of my cousins mm. and I'm like, you know, just how you doing? Because mm -hmm. I know that person had um, listened to some music that had some death in it. That was mm -hmm. another sign. So I'm sure. reading this, I'm like, oh my goodness. And so you just say, hey, how was your day at school? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't bring up anything in the past that I know that she had experienced before, mm -hmm. but to let her know I was just mm -hmm. there. How was your day? And just mm -hmm. making conversation. Yeah. I think so many times we get too busy right. and we don't connect anymore. And you mentioned social media. Yeah. We're and busy think, on the like phone. And yeah. in, in building those relationships are critical. If it's not suicide, if it's substance abuse or whatever that is that's masking that hurtness that the child or family person yes. is feeling, yes. that's what we have to get to the root cause. And the only mm -hmm. way you're going to do that is Let's actually connect. having dialogue and connecting and building relationships and not being so busy mm. that we don't see eye to eye and that we actually pick up a phone. There's mm. so much now that our society, we are quick to text or we're quick to do that stuff, Absolutely. but we don't pick up a phone. And there's so much that you miss mm. on those soft skills whenever all you do yes. is a text yes. or you're doing an email. That's right. That's you know, right. We've got to help our young people in our community yes. and our society to realize those soft skills mm -hmm. are critical skills. That's right. You know, I think sometimes as in my job, I feel like we've got that backwards. We call them soft skills. But I really feel like those are fundamental <laughs> skills that, that we've got we to, have. to have. You know, if you don't have eye contact, mm -hmm. if you don't feel, I mean, mm -hmm. Reese, or you could say something, and it might be on a text, might be no. Right. But the way you, your verbiage and the way your tone of that no is, right. it can mean a whole different thing. Well, I right. think using the phones and using or texting and using social media is leading to the isolation. It right, is. it is. You know, and maybe that's why that was that 1.2% increase sure. in 2016. Absolutely. Because Would people are that. no longer communicating, sitting down face, face to face. face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They want to use, not that we're knocking that, but there's a time for it. That's right. We still need to build relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're losing people. So please, build relationships. Take time to talk to your children. Mm -hmm. And again, it's uh, just like you said before, uh, Tammy, it's not just the children. We have our young adults. And That's right. Every and when I say children, I'm talking about young adults. Young I'm saying <laughs> anybody have children, babies, <laughs> whether they're go. older or not, you there know, you go. build but relationships. Absolutely. Yes. And, and you guys hit on it. It's really about connectedness. And a lot of the depression comes from not feeling connected, not feeling Ooh, worthy, yes, not feeling good, good enough. Yeah. So those are the things that we can really, really help with. And I guess if there was anything that I would really like people to, to take away from our discussion today, mm -hmm. um, is that this, as, uh, as was said before by Jennifer, this is completely preventable. Yes, there's so much help absolutely. out there. Um, there's a lot of research into anxiety and depression, which are the two most common diagnosed mental health disorders mm -hmm. that we have in this country. So there's a lot of help out there. There's a lot of research about different approaches, cognitive behavioral therapy and other types of therapies, along with perhaps psychotropic medica mm -hmm. medications, mm -hmm. antidepressant, changes in diet, uh, mm -hmm. changes in exercises, um, uh, exercise patterns and routines. Um, but a lot of it all, uh, really begins with, with your thought pattern. Mm -hmm. And so that connection that you're talking about, that relationship, you know, we're there to come alongside and, mm -hmm. and inspire hope. 
You know, the, the word says hope is an anchor mm -hmm. for the soul. Mm -hmm. And so we have to help them to feel that hope again. That's Once right. the hope is back, then they see a reason to live. That's right. They see a reason to keep going Absolutely. on. So, Absolutely. So that's why we have to have those relationships. And sometimes, you know, we, you know, we all get to the point where we're feeling a little down. Sure. You know, what I tell my children and I do to myself, go five years out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this moment right here will be Real in the past. past. You right. know, five years from now, this is not going to be that important. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's a very and I good feel part. like there's so much pressure, mm -hmm. you know, on in society as general. We've got to be, got to look to a certain image. We've got to be a certain thing. And when things sometimes fall down and we don't make a certain grade or we don't get that certain job or mm -hmm. we don't whatever, That's right. I think that's where that hopelessness comes. Like we mm -hmm. feel like it's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And somehow we've got to change that in our culture too. Mm -hmm. That, you know, my beliefs are when you fall, it's when you get back up. That's right. You know, how do you pick yourself back up? And that's we've right. got to change that culture too, mm -hmm. that it's not over. You mm -hmm. know, that some of the biggest lessons we've all learned is from when we fall. When we not fall. when everything's are perfect. That's mm -hmm. right. And that's a part of life. That's part of you life. You know, we have struggles. Mm -hmm. We go that's through right. things, but we don't get despair because right. we know that God is still there. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, we got to keep that faith. we got to keep mm -hmm. that hope. Mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting that, you know, the Bible talks about um, taking captive your thoughts mm -hmm. and some of the most powerful yes, evidence-based right. uh, approaches to treating depression has to do with thoughts yes. mm -hmm. and helping um, you know folks struggling with depression to really deal mm -hmm. with those That's automatic good. thoughts that they mm -hmm. have that are negative mm -hmm. in nature right. that not always are firmly rooted in truth and reality. So mm -hmm. we have to help right. them to, to really begin to restructure their thinking patterns and challenge some of things, those, those thinking patterns that um, contribute to the way that they see themselves. This has been really yeah. good. I mm -hmm. do appreciate you Thank both you. for coming here. For I'm happy to get you all back on the <laughs> set. I do appreciate that. Absolutely. Our mission at Right Decisions is to leave you with tools and strategies to make your life easier and more successful. Through our discussion today, it has been our objective to provide warning signs of suicide and to provide steps that can be taken to prevent suicide. If you're having suicidal thoughts, please hold on and reach out to a loved one for help. What the enemy, the devil, tries to do is to keep you isolated. Please stay connected to your loved ones and your local church. Most importantly, stay connected to God. If you do not know the Lord, there's no right decisions without making the best and ultimate decisions of all times. That is making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Why don't you make Jesus your Lord right now? Invite him in your heart right now. Just simply believe with your heart that Jesus died for your sins and repent of your sins and confess out loud Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now when Jesus returns, you'll be able to join him. Thank you so much for tuning in Right Decisions, a show with a positive message. If you'd like to contact me, email me at TuesdayMateRightDecisions at gmail.com. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye for now.